Welcome to Dominion's 4. I'm the Shadow of the Hawk, and today, well, I'm playing this. Now, yeah, this game's old. It's really old. Um, it's literally the only thing I can get to work on my computer. And I'm playing it for fun. I thought I might as well record some of this and just put it out there. So, we're going to be creating a new game. We're going to be playing on the, um, Lower the Glove multiplayer map. I, I like the look of the map, but this is... No, it's great. We'll do the main map because it's epic and I should probably have a video probably um, suggested. I will be playing as the Atlantean faction. Right. The series is the Rise of Atlantis. Got the of the Rise of Atlantis. There we go. So we're going to be starting in the early age, as you can see there are three different ages. Early age is like Bronze Age, nobody really knows how to use iron. Metal tools are few and farther between. Then you go into iron, uh, effectively the Iron Age, slash Middle Ages, like you got plate armor and steel, and then you got people who are just starting to figure out how iron works. Then you get to the Late Age, where everyone is using steel and iron, uh, and there's less magic. Um, and then these two have a bit of magic going around. So anyway, we're going to select early age. We're going to get quite a few people in this game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You'll have one on mighty um, AI. We'll have two on difficult. Just because I'm still learning the game. Um, I want some that are like on normal AI, which I think is a handle. So on difficult for a little bit of extra challenge. And then a mighty AI for like the attack. I'll be playing as Atlantis, Emergence of the Deep Ones. Basically, the lore for these, if I click OK, is um, you can read this if you want. Um, but basically, the gist of it is uh, for the longest time, the oceans have been dominated by a race called the Tritons, and Atlanteans were a fringe minority living in like coral reefs in very small numbers. However, recently, they started coming out of like the deep trenches in larger and larger numbers until they've basically formed their own kingdom based around a place called the Basalt City. And now they're out and conquering and doing Atlantean things. So if we look down here, they're amphibious, meaning we can go in water and on land really, really easily. Um, the military is very much rooted around their light infantry and their shock troops. So uh, with that in mind, we're basically going to have a lot of chafe units with some heavier units basically punching through the middle is the way I'm probably going to play this, and then magic, earth, water, fire, and astral, um, that's basically self-explanatory, that's the type of magic that they have access to, um, and then our priests are powerful, that basically means our ability to spread our religion and our ability to buff our, um, holy units is super, super simple. Uh, no missile units, we can negate that once we get on land. So, we're going to select a god, and you can use all these different uh, avatars and stuff. To save time, I made one. Uh, if I load my Pretender God, it's a Dagon. Uh, as you can see here, we're going really heavy with blood magic. I, I really like the idea that this thing, so the, the general lore of a Dagon is the Dagon, the Dagon. <laughs> I didn't realize that first time. Um, but so the general lore of this is it's a beast that was seen at the beginning of time, and with the leaving of the original god, it is basically crawled its way out of the depths and is now wreaking havoc upon uh, all of creation. Actually, is there a way for... No, I can't remember. Okay, so he's just that... The bag is... <laughs> um, and I really wanted to go heavy in with that theme, so I basically gave him as much blood magic as I could possibly give him. And then also a lot of chaos, a lot of magic drain. The idea basically is he is this chaotic evil force that is feeding upon the realm around him. And... Uh, the Atlanteans follow him because he is their ancestor, he is their progenitor, he is what gave them life in the darkness. So we're going to select the Dagon. We're going to have one starting province. All of this is going to be basic. Down here we're going to switch story events. Um, just to like make things a little bit more interesting, you know, give that a little bit of a story to different provinces and I really change up the way I'm going to be playing the game. Then we're also going to have Thrones of Ascension. Uh, this is basically how we're going to win. I'm not going to get too much into the other types of victory for this series. Uh, I'm going to leave it at 7. I will, however, get rid of a level 2 throne, and I will replace that with a level 3 throne. The idea that, um, okay, so you can hit all these level 1s, or you can secure that level 3, but you're going to have to use all the military assets 
taking a level 3 drone has and also securing it from all the other people, or do you want to spread out and try to get as many lower level thrones as possible? It's up to you. Well, me. And I will allow renaming, because I like the idea of if like that one dude really, really shows himself, I can give him a title, for example. Or if any of you out there want to be a part of this series, just leave a comment. That's, that's all I ask. Leave a comment, give the name suggestion, maybe a little biography, you know, give me an idea of the character that's being played. And yeah, so we're going to load in. And it's going to take a bit to create the world for how big it is, and I will get back to you once that's done. Back. So, the Dagon, god of Atlantis. In the beginning, there was chaos. Out of chaos rules worlds populated with multitudes of beings. Uh, wars were fought, civilizations were built and crumbled, gods fought amongst themselves until one guy came and took great power and enlightenment and basically got rid of all his rivals, and now Age of Chaos has ended, everyone is happy. Lovely story. Well, it gets bad, uh, so the Supreme God left, and in that confusion, bastards like the Dagon have woken up, or have thrown off their yokes and have decided it is time to take over. So now we are in a time of great strife and suffering, a time of magic unequaled, and we like to call this the Ascension Wars. So here we are. We spawned in the middle of the map, which could be fun. That, that sounds like it's going to be fun. And as you can see, we're in the ocean because we're Atlantis. Now, as you can see here, I've got a pair of commanders. I've got a scout and I've got a coral commander. And if I click on here, you can see all the different stats, like their weapons, their armor, um, the individual themselves, which is like a high trained shambler, and then all these like special abilities that come with their equipment and natural uh, abilities. Over here, as you can see, we've got all these different tabs that I can select on, like research, global enchantment, etc., etc. Um, if I ever have to explain what these do, I will. Uh, then we come down here, and these are all the benefits that this province has. So if I jump like over here, for example, uh, I haven't scouted out these provinces, so I can't really say what's in them and what's not. Uh, and this also includes things like buildings, as well as these magic sites. Now, if I jump in to my recruitable units, as you can see, I have a lot of different things. And if I were to play a different faction, like, say, Aramor, which is sort of like the Romans... I would have a very different recruitment tree, um, not only based on, well, these are obviously not humans, but I would also have different types of units. Like here, as you can see, we have a little bit of light infantry and then really good shock troops. With Aramor, you have different variants of line troops. Some are kind of crap, some are decently good. Very minimal in the way of shock troops, at least the way I understand them. And then really, really good cavalry. So anyway... Talking about that, I've decided I've figured out how I want to go with this recruitment. I'm going to start by getting a Mage of the Deep. This is my uh, basic uh, caster unit. They're able to do magic and stuff, and I'm going to get them um, because I want a unit that can uh, begin research as well as cast magic eventually when I get around to that. And then for my soldier recruitments, I want these guys, these living pillars, which are super, super good early units, however, I can't recruit that many of them, I can only get two, and I want to avoid getting too many of them, so we're only going to get one of them for now, we're going to get a few of these Warriors of the Deep, because I want a decent amount of shock troops, and then I'm also going to get a bunch, I'm going to get a few of these uh, Deep One Spearmen, just because I want to sort of keep with um, the idea that Atlant the Atlantis is where all the Deep Ones are coming out, I'm going to play this a little bit narrative, so like if I have a fort on the coastline, for example, I will recruit some of the more basic Atlanteans, but everything out of Atlantis, I'm going to try to keep to these deep ones just because it makes sense. You know, the things coming out of the trenches would be the deep ones. So we're doing that. Uh, I've, I'm going to send my scout out to, you know, scout around, see what's going on. And uh, my research, I'm going to get this out of the way. I want a little bit of blood magic from when my god shows up. And I'm also going to want a little bit of conjuration construction as well. So when we get around to it, I can build better gear for my units. And we're going to end the turn. And uh, as you can see, now we have all these different block proclamations from the different factions. So uh, uh, these guys, Acro, Arco, Arco Cephal. I'm, I'm just going to call them Arco. Uh, these are like the ancient Greeks. Um, then we have Abyssia, which I believe are demony bastards. We have Helheim, which are um, evil dark elves, I want to say. I haven't interacted with them, so I don't know. Then you have Niflheim, which are frost giants. And then Kailasa. Kyle, I think that's a human kingdom. I don't know. I haven't interacted with them either. And now we can see, oh boy, 
There's a lot of angry stuff around us. So 30, 20. I think I'm going to have to go yeah, shamblers. Yeah, I think I can take some shamblers. So uh, as you can see, the scout's there. And if we jump back here, we have my uh, priest, who's actually that's a really good priest right there. I, I, that's that's pretty good, like a uh, little bit of variety. So anyway, we're going to jump back into the recruit units. And in order to make my living pillars worth it, I need a priest. Now, I was thinking about getting these Mothers of the Deep because these are really, really good. But I want something a bit cheaper, like this little Coral Priest here. Um, which, yeah. Uh, and then we'll grab another Deep One Spearman. Now, these would be Coastline Dwellers. And I I'd argue the reason why I'm using this over, say, a Deep One is we've caught, like, we need someone who's expendable. That Maybe this individual is on a pilgrimage to the Basalt City. And uh, that's why he is now part of our army. So we're going to jump into my army setup. We're going to get these uh, little deep ones, and we're going to throw them into the spear line, along with uh, these better shock troops. Actually, we're going to throw these little deep ones here, in with the rest of the chafe, and these living pillars. We're going to set the living pillars to guard commander. We're going to set the coral commander to stay behind troops. Oh, and um, for those of you who do know about Dominions 4, um, I haven't... I'm going to get a... Uh, Basalt King for a Prophet, and for those of you who don't know what that means, is a Prophet is, it's an individual who is able to basically bless in the name of the God better than normal priests, as well as a few other minor things. I want to do a Basalt King for narrative reasons, and also, um, I don't want a individual who is solely a melee-focused individual, because I want to be able to, like, put them in the back and still let them be effective. Um and not lose out on them being a prophet, and yeah, it's just, I could probably explain that better, honestly, I'm not going to try to, anyway, so we're going to end turn, and, do, 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 do. all right, Vanheim is, um, normal elves, is what I want to say, and then the Yomi are like the Japanese demons, uh, Oni, and then like the various like slaves, and we have Atlantis, five death gems. A few magic gems have been found in the black algae covering the floors of a torture chamber. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, we just randomly found these purple gems in our torture chamber. Okay. Um, so, yeah, now we have a good little force of units. So let's get everyone... No, bad. Get up here. And then uh, my pillars. Uh, the Coral Priest. If we jump over to you, I want you to uh, cast Blessing, and then you just... Stay behind troops the entire time. Actually, no, you, uh, no, just cast spells. There we go. All right, so now we have this force. That's 40 units jumping into the deal with war shamblers. I think that we should be in a good enough spot to deal with that little province. So we're going to jump in and deal with them. Do, 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 do. So... Uh, we have this little battle going on, so if we jump over to view battle, we'll be able to see this happen. And I really like the combat in this because it's sort of like a tabletop uh, play. It's sort of like a tabletop game. So if I jump into here, um, you can see, for example, this deep one. He's got an attack skill, and then the attack on this weapon. So these two values get a uh, here. It explains really well, actually. So the values basically get added up to um, the values get added up to see how well they get through an individual's defense skill, which is also buffed up by the armor and stuff that they're carrying. And then there's a dice roll on top of that. So, um, you have their basic abilities plus a behind-the-scenes dice roll that occurs to decide how much damage is done or if the attack doesn't get through, which I think is really, really cool. And as, a, as an uber nerd, I really, really love that. So, we have our little forces here, who I just realized I didn't give... Oh, sorry, I don't want to go that fast who I just realized I haven't given any proper orders to. Whoops. But as you can see, we're mincing through these shamblers. Because if we jump into here, you can see they've got very little in the way of protection, basic um, attack skills when compared to other stuff. And their weapons aren't... They're just using their claws. They're just, like, swinging at us. And then we've got all these spears, which give us a little bit of extra reach. So as you can see, that guy's running. And if we jump over back to this, you can see we lost um, basically the chase, the guys I wanted to lose. And now we've conquered this. If we jump back here, as you can see, we have more resources to work with to recruit more units with. And what I think I want to do is I want to get some more of these um, Warriors of the Deep. Can I get a few? And then let's get some more of these Spearmen. Like that. All right. There we go. And I don't really... I want to get a sizable force before I do any more of this recruitment up here. I don't think we really need to do any more of this recruitment yet. Um, 
Actually, I could get my profit. You know what? We're going to try to get my profit. So we're going to bop bop like that. It's going to cost us a good bit of gold, but we now will have our profit. And I think... Ooh. That's a uh, Midgard. That's the... Uh, I think that... No, it's, uh, is that Van Ahn? No, I'm thinking of Late Age Midgard. So no, we're going to take this force back. We're going to jump over here. And the next province we're going to get is these uh, kids Because this looks to be the weakest out of all of them. Uh, if my experience with Ichthyids is accurate. And then we got, again, another relatively weak province here. I want to get all this, like, water stuff sorted out first, because I really want to get on land until I absolutely have to, because if I stay in the water, I'm not going to piss off anyone on land. So anyway, uh, we're going to jump back here, make sure all the research is going good, and we're going to end our turn. And as you probably saw with that Basalt King, um, it's going to take longer to get him because of how good of a unit he is. So we've got our little force here. I think after this next turn, I think is when I'm going to uh, stop reco this recording session and be done. So anyway, now we have all these units and now I should probably give them all actual orders. So uh, this line, we're going to have them hold an attack closest enemy. We're going to form them up into a nice little line right up here. And then I'm thinking these guys are going to hold an attack as well, closest enemy, but we're going to uh, spread them out a little bit, you know, like have them cover the flanks and stuff like that. Keep things from like getting around. Um, and sort of force everything to the center, is how I'm viewing this. So we'll take our little army here, we'll send them in, and if we jump back here, we've got the same amount of recruitment going on. Yep. Alright, so let's end the turn. And let's watch this fight happen. And then, uh, we'll be done for today. Alright, so view battle. See, so yeah, as you can see now, they're in like a line formation. Um, and we put the chafe up front, so they'll be able to, like, take a little bit more of the damage from the actual units I care about losing. And we're rip as you can see, we're ripping through these bastards like they're nothing. And then now we've got the actual guys with, um, shield, with shields and armor. If we jump in here, they're using, uh, turtles, which makes sense. And now uh, look at these, look at these fish bastards. Um, but yeah, if, if push comes to shove, there'll be a good sheep force that we can build up on the coastlines and send up on land if push comes to shove. Um, so yeah, as you can see, we've minced them. Did we suffer any major casualties? Uh, we lost a deep one, we lost a warrior of the deep, and we lost two of our deep one spearmen. That, that's fine. Alright. So, oh, one thing I forgot to mention is defense. Um, other people can attack provinces, and if you build up defense in these regions, it's going to be harder to attack them. So we'll just get those two up to an acceptable amount. And now we have Ogotai, who will become the prophet. And now, with all these extra resources that we have, I think it's time to start trying to get a few extra living pillars out of our recruitment. So we can get another one. Some more Warriors of the Deep. And then some more of the Chafe. Like that. Alright, I think we're good for today. So, again, uh, if you enjoyed, leave a like and leave a comment. And if you for whatever reason want to see yourself um, in this game, probably getting killed uh, under my poor orders, um, just leave a name of a character that you want named. Uh, it could be just something as simple as uh, Dave and what he is, like a mage or a commander, and I will uh, name them accordingly. And if you have something very specific in mind, again, just leave it in the comment. So, um, yeah, have a good day.